So now what we're gonna do is um, figure out how many of pieces at this size we can get out of a sheet of plywood. Um, and I do the same kind of method with that, is uh, you just draw, draw a picture. And grain sometimes will make a difference, but it's a standard size, so it's four foot, by eight foot. And I'm putting it way off to the side in case I gotta put other numbers and stuff inside here. <clears throat> so what you do is uh, again 19 11 16 that's a little bit big now to get him in, into that uh, uh, eight foot size because our original one was at 19.2 so that's going to be more stock than we have and we know that just by looking at our little things here because uh, in decimal form, 19.11.16 is 19.7, roughly. And that's a lot more than that. And if you have to do multiples, you're going to be like way oversized. <clears throat> so, sorry, I got something in my throat. Um, so what, what I'm going to say to do this time is we're going to go the opposite way of what we would typically go because our green is here. And typically I'd want the green to line up with the box. So if the box is longer, I'd want the box to have the uh, green go this way. Um, there's a couple ways to approach it. We're going to look at a couple of different avenues to doing that. Um, so actually here's here's the bottom of the box on some of them. See what I'm saying? How the green is actually running this way. And typically you want it running this way. It's because of there's two plies that are running in this direction on this thin stock. There's two plies running this way. So you got more strength out of it. But again, what is the heaviest thing we're going to put in there? Even if we put 70 pounds somehow inside this box, it's going to hold either way because it's such a short distance. So it's going to hold up just fine. But typically, you'd want to line it up so it's like that. So it's just a, a little thing to think about. Um, and there's other ways to do this too because we can just have a drop and make the smaller pieces out of the drop and they work out really efficient that way. So let's just experiment a little bit. We'll just use a few numbers to come up with a couple of scenarios. Maybe make a couple of these drawings until we figure out the most efficient one. So in eight feet, if we do that same kind of thing, so we're going to take eight feet is equal to 96 inches. We always work in terms of inches in a cabinet shop. Okay, so um, if we take the bottom, which is 19, 11, 16, and divide it into 96, we'll just, let's see where that puts us here. So we're just going to use a calculator because it's, it's quicker when the, the numbers get more compl complicated. So we're going to take 96, we're going to add a curve to that, so we're going to call it uh, 12, 13, 13, 16. So, 96 divided by 19.8125, which is the decimal equivalent. And you can look up decimal equivalent charts for fractions. Um, I forgot to put the decimal sign in there. There we go. Divided by 19.8125. So we can get 4.84 pieces out of it. So we got, we're just going to do a roughly divided. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's in the calculator is saying we can get 4 at 19 inches. So these are all 19.8, I'm just going to say at this point. 19.8, 19.8. It's okay to write it on there. If you use up a little paper, when you're doing something this big, a piece of paper is 2 or 3 cents. And if you figure something out that's going to cost you $5,000 on a two cent piece of paper, you can afford to go through a few sheets of paper. <laughs> so it's worth your time to spend time thinking about this stuff because it's going to save you money in the long run. So anyway, um, so then becomes how many of the six and three eighths can we get out of that going the width wise? So six and three eighths, if we add the curve, which is an eighth inch, so six and three eighths plus one eighth is six and a half. We take 48. 48 divided by 6.5, we can get 7. So it's kind of hard to divide it by 7, so we'll just kind of start 
we're going to have a tiny drop left over, so we'll just go like that. So we're going to divide that space into seven. That's roughly half. So that's, that's one, two, three, four, five. I still got there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, with a little tiny drop. So um, those are all at six and a half with a little tiny drop. And that kind of drop is fine. If, you know, if we're looking at having like a two inch drop, which is, we can figure it out. So 0.38 times six and a half, because that was left over. So it's 7.38, 7.38. That means there's seven pieces and the drop will be 0.38 times six and a half. So it's 0.38 times six and a half. So 0.38 times 6.5. So it's about a two and a half inch drop. And a drop again is the part that drops to the floor after you're all done cutting. So that's what I keep saying drop, drop, and that's what I'm talking about. We already have had a conversation about drops. So 7.38, we know we have seven pieces and this is the fractional amount that's left. And then 0.38 times this, uh, what we multiply or divide it into that 48 inches. So it, that's what it is, 0.38 times six and a half. And that's the amount of drop that we'd have approximately. That's what we're always looking for it approximately for now. So that seems like a pretty good way to do that. It's just that we have this really large drop at the end. So let's figure out what that drop is. We'll just do that calculation again. So 96 divided by 19, 11, 6, or 13, 16, so 19.8125. So this is going to be 0.84, which is a good size drop. So 0.84, it's actually, we get four, so one, two, three, four pieces. So it's 4.8. Four, okay. So we get four pieces, one, two, three, four, and we take 0.84 times the number we're dividing by. Oops, there we go. Um, so we're going to go 19.8125 times 0.84. So that drop is 16 inches. That's a big drop. 16.64. Now, remembering our grain, so it, our grain would be going the opposite direction. Again, it ain't going to make that big a difference in this for this application. So let's just look at how many times we can get six and three eighths into there because we know 19 and almost 20 inches. We'll just call it 20 inches for now. 20 plus 20 is 40. That will leave us out of a 48 inch sheet only eight inches a drop, which is going to be fairly small because it's just going to be for this little piece right here that's going to be a drop and it's only going to be maybe just a tiny bit so let's just figure that out quick develop a plan so 16.64 which was the leftover we're going to divide it by six six and a half so divided by six and a half so we're going to get two more if we run in, so we were running like this this whole thing, the pieces are running vertical. This, my drawings are not real good. If I wanted to be good, I'd, I'd be using a scale or something to draw it with. And then they're going to come across like this. So all those pieces are going to come out of the sheet. And then we'll calculate how many pieces we're going to get out once we determine the best way to do it. So 6.64 divided by 6.5. So we can get two more out of here if we run it this way with a drop of 0.56, which is about just a little over three inches, which again, isn't a terrible size drop. It's acceptable for sure. And then you're gonna get two more. So one, two, three, four out of this part. So out of this part down here, we're gonna get four pieces. Now this top part, we're gonna get seven times four, 28, right? 28 pieces. So 28 plus 4 is 
32 pieces per sheet if we do it this way. Uh, we can look at it doing it the other way. Uh, let's see here, what would that be? So let's take 19.8. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get a drink. 19.8, uh, just for experimentation, let's do another one here. So again, we'll write it way out to the side, 96 and 48. Remember, this little piece of paper ain't costing you nothing to experiment with, all right? So it can't hurt to just mess around with that on a piece of paper. It only costs you a little bit of time. If you're in a huge hurry, now well, sometimes just go to the first answer you come up with that will work. Otherwise, sometimes if you got a little time, you can mess around and try to figure out different ways. And this is what I'm doing. I'm just showing you a couple different ways to approach this problem. So we got 48. So how many 19 and 13, 16 can we get out of there? It's going to be two point something. So 48 divided by 19.8125. So I'll get two. A small drop on the edge. All right. And what is the drop? If it's 0.42 of 19, 11, 16th, we might be able to do an edge like wise one up and down like that. The green is just going to be cross green with this style. <clears throat> okay. So let's just figure that out. What's uh, oh, what did they just figure out there? 48. No, I screwed up. 48. Divided by 19 and 13, 19.8125, 0.42. All right, so we're going to have 2.42 pieces, 2.42. Okay, so 0 0.42, 0 0.42 times 19.8125. So it's one, two pieces, the fractional amount that's left over is 0.42, so it's actually like a percent. So we're going to have 42% essentially of 19 and 11 sixteenths. So then you just multiply that out. So we're going to end up with 8 inches on the edge. So that's 8 inches here, a little bit over 8 and 5 sixteenths. And this is 19 and 0.8, give or take, 19.8. And if you add all these numbers up, it should come out to something pretty close to 48. So our drop here is 8 and 5 sixteenths. <clears throat> we can easily get another piece at 6 and 3 eighths out of that and just have a tiny drop along this whole edge. Then. So let's figure out the 96 way. 96 divided by 6 and a half. So 96 divided by 6.5, we're going to get 14 with a 0.76 drop. So again, we're going to end up with just a tiny drop. So 14 pieces in between. And the lines are going to be so close, we're just going to call it 14 pieces. We're just going to put it here instead of marking it out. <clears throat> so we know that if we come up this way, so we're 14 times 2. Oh, we're going to use this along. So we're going to just come back to this little drop along this whole edge at 8 and 5 sixteenths. If, if we have 90, 11, 19, 11 sixteenths into 96, let's just figure out what that drop is on the end there. So 96 divided by 19.8125, it's roughly four pieces. So along this side, we're going to get four pieces. So one, two, three, four with a drop at the end. So here's our, where we come down there and our drop along here. So if we get 14 pieces times two, because there's one row here, we're gonna divide it into 14 little pieces here. And so there's one row here, one row here at 14. So let's figure out how we did. So we got 14 times one, two rows times two rows, that's 28 pieces in this section. And then we're going to get one, two, three, four more pieces there, so plus four. 28 plus four is, anybody know? How about 32? So we got 32 pieces here, 
with 32 pieces here. So, if it was me, I like the green on this better because it's going to be a little bit stronger on those boxes. Again, it doesn't matter too much for this application. If it did, we'd be wasting some stock. But if you have to have stock that's going to perform a certain way, you have to do what you're going to do. And so the best way, the best way to do it is just go with the green that's optimum, and then a few boxes that are going to be, you know, fine anyway. It's, it, it doesn't matter. So if you need to perform, waste the stock, or use a drop later. But if you don't need the strength or the characteristics that, it, and make sure that the performance is going to be fine, then just go with the best way to do it, which is with with the grain. And get the same amount of pieces out of the piece of stock anyway. So, two different ways to get there. This is the best way because of the grain. So that's the way I would go. We're going to get 32 pieces out of stock, or out of a piece of sheet stock. So we're going to have to have two sheets of stock. So for the bottom, 32 pieces per sheet, and we need 42. So we're going to need two sheets. Notice how I'm, I'm doing the little minor calculations off to the side, and what I actually need is over here in this row. Everything that's circled is quantity of what I need. Okay, now all you have to do is go back and put in the numbers for that, those amounts, and you'll have how much it costs. Well, I went a long time ago and got numbers for myself, and I know you guys did too because it's part of your homework. But uh, so the numbers I've got don't necessarily reflect what you've got. Uh, I did numbers down at uh, three places. I think I did Home Depot, I did Menards, and I did uh, the lumber company Right Lumber here in town. Uh, I've told you several times, Right Lumber is probably the, the best place to go because you get really good help. Their stock is typically really, really good. Um, but there are just some things that they can't compete against Menards. Um, and uh, so if you have the extra money, I would absolutely go to Right Lumber any day of the week. But in this case, um, I had to go to Menards to save some money. And uh, so it is what it is. Menards has got lumber and so does Right Lumber. It's just that this time I had to save the money. But um, otherwise, I would definitely go to Right Lumber every time. Um, so anyway, for a, a one by eight, 10 footer, I got $11.17 a board, okay? Um, and then for the one by foot, or one by eight, eight foot board, I got $8.96 per board, okay? And then, let's see here. Oh, I added that up, so this should actually be down here. Just put it right down here. Because this is where I added up to the 27, so I want it to be lined up with that. So that sh I should have just put it down here. I just put an arrow, and that's as long as you know what we're talking about, we're good. Um, and then we got um, doll rods. I got $4 a rod. I think they've actually gone down in price a little bit, but kind of is what it is at this point. So I'm just going to put $4 per rod. Um, how much for a sheet of stock? We got 30, it's a, roughly a buck a board, a buck a square foot, and there's 32 feet in a, in a sheet. So if you take four times eight, it's 32. So anyway, that's what that is. So it's about $32 for a sheet. So $32 per sheet. So we got doll rods, we got that, we got the amount per, oh, the hinge. I have a spot for hinges on here yet. Oh, it's way up here. But I'll just put it down here since we're kind of lining things up this way. The hinge, I got four dollars as well. Again, these numbers will fluctuate. So, piano hinge, that should be four dollars. Now, this is the price per piece, right? And so, I forgot to say how many hinges we need. So we've got to figure out how many hinges. Um, if we have a six foot hinge and that's what we're actually using, 
This time I actually went through the calculations for a 100 foot hinge and a 4 foot hinge and 2 foot hinge. It was cheaper to get the 100 foot roll, but we would have had twice too many uh, or four times as many hinges as we needed. And uh, it just doesn't make sense to buy that many. So I decided to go with the longest length I could buy at Menards that would work well, and it was uh, six footer because 18 inches, which is what the length of this hinge is, goes evenly into a six foot hinge four times. So out of a six foot hinge, we're going to get four pieces. Pieces. Uh, Okay, so the four pieces at 18 inches. Okay, so how many do I need? If I got um, 42 divided by four, that would be uh, 10. We'll have to have at least 11 hinges. So 11 at, and the price per hinge was $4 per hinge. 11 six foot hinges. All right, so now we got all our numbers. Now we just simply multiply by the amount and then, um, oh, I only, so there was, oh, no, this is the quantity right here. All right, so we're good, we're set. So all we have to do is multiply each line by the appropriate number and then we'll be set. So I'll do that right now. So we have 12 boards at 1117. 12 times 1117. That's equal to $134. Not a lot of room right here. I can erase this one, well, the other one anyway. So oh, that was $134, $134.04. All right, so then remember we added this one and this one together, so we ended up with 27 boards. So 27 times 896. 27 times 896, 241. 92. Okay, and then we got a uh, dowel rod, 21 rip rods at $4 each. It's pretty easy math, but I'll do it anyway. It's $84 for dowel rods. All right, and then uh, we need two sheets at $32 each because we can't just order a half a sheet, although we might be able to at Menards, I'm not sure, but I, I did, I'll just keep the drop for next year and then the sixth graders can build it next year. So 32 times two, $64. And then uh, the piano hinge, I have $4 twice, probably don't need it twice. So we got to have 11 pieces, 6 feet, so 11 times 4, $44. And some of you who really know how to use your calculator probably already have the number. And now you just add all those up. So 134. 0.04 plus 241.9 plus 84 plus 64 plus 44. So that is a total of getting lower of 5. 67.96. So effectively 5.68. So that's what we're just we're just going to round to 5.68. OK, 
Okay, and we have 42 boxes, so in order to find the price for 42 boxes, we have to divide 568 by 42 boxes. Five sixty eight divided by forty two that gives us thirteen dollars and fifty two cents roughly per box. Yay! A lot of work to get there, but there you are. So we've done a cost analysis. Now if we're gonna build one box, see the price would go up. Because although we'd only need one, one sheet, you would still have to pay the $32 for the whole sheet of stock. Uh, for that one little piece of plywood, you'd have to pay $32 just to get that piece of stock. <clears throat> I can tell you that if it was me building it, I'd find another way. I'd probably just make it out of solid pine and do some cuts on a piece of pine to get it the right size and then just ride, let it ride inside that rabbit. Um, so, or inside that dado. But that being said, Okay, that's that, just that one application. Uh, I'd probably use just one board, so I'd maybe get a 12-footer and then get the whole, the end pieces, the sides, and the top out of one board. But it's still going to cost you a whole lot more than $13.52, because just one board is $11.16. If you had to buy a hinge, even a two-footer, you're going to have an oddball waste amount and so what I'm saying is, this whole box would probably cost probably $35 or $40 if we had to just build one. But since we're building 42, it's only going to cost us $13.52 each, assuming that we have all the tooling <coughs> that we need to cut it out and, and do stuff with. So you can see the price for making a bulk amount is always going to be cheaper than making just a small amount, just like one or five even. So. Um, Anyway, that's what I have for the cost analysis. So uh, we might do a scaling thing where actually we look at a board and then we actually measure out on the board and determine the different sizes. So uh, that might be on the next uh, on the next video. So there you have it.